Leadership can be as simple as ABC, but that doesn't mean it's easy. And this year I'm seeing time and again, one key factor that's having a damaging effect on the sports leaders I work with. And you need to know about it because even though it's invisible to you, it's dragging you in a downward cycle that's adversely affecting your performance as a leader. All because you may not quite grasp the difference between a reaction and a response. On the other hand, I work with some high performing leaders who do get it. And when you see what lies behind this key habit, you can't unsee it. The cloud lifts and you'll see and feel the difference in your performance as a leader. It's as simple as my ABC formula. Let's check it out. First, let's distinguish the important difference between a reaction and a response. The difference lies primarily in the thought process and emotional control involved in each. A reaction is typically an instinctive immediate response to a stimulus often driven by emotions. It's a reflex, quick and unconsidered. And it results in actions that may be impulsive or defensive, kind of like when you make an emotional reply when provoked, or when you make a snap judgment without fully understanding the situation. On the other hand, a response involves a more deliberate and thoughtful approach. It requires pausing to assess the situation, consider various options, and choosing a measured and mature next step. A response is grounded in rationality, empathy, and a focus on constructive outcomes. Ultimately, it allows you to engage with others more effectively and positively. So what's the best way to understand how you can respond as opposed to react? Triggering events are omnipresent. We live in an always on culture where stress inducing events are prevalent. And it's more and more obvious that many people provoke reactions to manipulate gain. But instead of being in a dance with inevitable daily issues and frustrations, you end up in a wrestling match. Your personal cost is deepening levels of frustration and inner tension. When your default is react rather than respond, the downward spiral of your ongoing personal performance is fueled. The solution is awareness. As a leader, you'll instinctively notice results and they capture your attention. Now I have another name for them, consequences. I see consequences both good and not so desirable as the predictable outcomes of how you've acted, what we'll call your behaviors, and the triggers for the action, what we'll call antecedents. So your formula for understanding this is simple. A plus B equals C. Antecedent plus behavior equals consequence. So to explain, the antecedent is your triggering event. It's the episode that produces or sets off either a reaction or a response. But these triggers only have the level of meaning and power that you attach to them. And this is important to grasp. You always have a choice as to your retort when you see and feel a triggering event. We can see it as good or bad, or you can view it as neutral and that adjusted is. In effect, taking a neutral view means you retain balance and control. And with balance and control comes a measured and controlled response instead of a reaction. Whether you react or respond prompts your actions in the moment. In other words, your behaviors. Together, these two events sum up to the resulting consequences you end up as humans, or creatures of habit. So you tend to fall into a loop where you experience and answer triggers with emotionally grounded reactions, resulting in same consequences again and again. This can easily become your unhelpful norm. Potential stress inducers are simply a fact of life. Reaction inducing antecedents or triggers are likely on multiple occasions throughout your day. And it's quite clear that they repeat and don't change too much in nature. So how do skilled leaders make a habit of responding instead of reacting? An effective approach is to get upstream of events. This will help you recognize and understand the trigger events and alter your habitual learned and unrewarding reaction. When you pull back the curtain on these, you disempower them. Then you can regain composure and activate a new chosen response that will serve you so much better. In that way, you stop being a puppet to events and habitual reactions. You turn off your autopilot and you take back control. When you feel stress rising after being triggered, take a moment to pause and breathe deeply. This simple act can help calm your nervous system and create space for a more thoughtful response. Instead of jumping into action, ask yourself clarifying questions about the situation, such as, what's the core issue here? Or how might my response affect others? This approach allows you to detach from the emotional impulse and consider it the best course of action. This can take just a few seconds. Initially, it can feel like a lifetime, but you'll quickly get comfortable and build a habit. Additionally, consider employing techniques to broaden your perspective. Let's call that zooming out. When you know you might be faced with a stressful scenario, prepare in advance by shifting your focus to your menu of responses for a given trigger situation. Visualizing the situation from a wider angle can provide clarity and reveal alternative solutions that may not have been apparent if you're narrowly focused over time, Practicing these techniques will enhance your ability to respond thoughtfully and improve your decision-making on both personal and professional relationships. You'll ultimately foster a more positive, productive environment for yourself and everyone around you. Being in control is one of the important first steps on your path to consistent peak performance as a leader. It's something I focused on in one of my most recent videos.
Responding instead of reacting delivers you closer to a place where you illuminate and flourish, where you have a renewed capability to access your ability, where you feel and function better professionally and personally, and where peak performance can simply become your daily normal. In short, what you practice and permit, you promote. It's as simple as ABC. Huge thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please remember to hit the like button and then subscribe.